Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 174, season seven. Today's date is November 5th, 2022. And thank you for joining me today. On today's program, I will talk about Wimpy's hamburgers. Um, then I will talk about the Spiegel Company. That's a catalog uh, company in Chicago. Also, I will t- do a tribute to Roger Treemstra. He was a uh, meteorologist for WGN-TV Channel 9 in Chicago. He did the weather and also on the radio. And I'll talk about my memories of him. So uh, right now, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Keebler Tato Skins. <laughs> I remember these very well. And here's a commercial from the 1980s. And uh, I think uh, commercials from 1985-86, around that time. So sit back and enjoy, everyone, and I'll be right back. Thank you. Keebler presents the appealing taste of baked potato skins in a crunchy chip. Potato skins got baked potato appeal because they're made with potato skins that are real. The Keebler elves make potato skin snack chips with real potatoes and skins. Cheddar cheese and bacon, sour cream and chives, tasty baked potatoes. And they finally got barbecue flavor too. They're made with potatoes and skins that are real. Potato skins from Keebler, baked potato appeal. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Keebler Tato Skins. Uh, I remember this product very well. They were very good. Uh, according to the commercial, uh, the flavors they had was uh, it went real fast, but it's like cheddar and bacon, sour cream and chive, and they had barbecue flavor. I think they were, I believe there were more flavors as time went on during uh, when the product was available. Um, I don't know, uh, but they don't make them anymore, but I think they make something similar to that, uh, like TGI Fridays or something, some other companies. I don't know. I don't know why they went out of business. I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know why the product was discontinued because uh, they were very good. God, it was so long ago. <laughs> you know, I'm guilty of snack of, you know, of uh, snacks, you know, Crunchy snacks. I love those. You know, potato chips, pretzels, uh, Cheetos. I try to avoid them, most of them, because of the salt. You know, I'm getting older. I'm trying to stay away from that. But, you know, I'll have them in moderation. Uh, I love Dave Vittner's no salt potato chips. Those are good. You know, I they're very tasty. They have no salt. I can eat as many as I like, you know. So that's uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> And I'm blessed with that. <laughs> okay, in the beginning of the program, I mentioned that I will talk about Whippy's Hamburgers and the Spiegel Catalog Company. And also I'll do a tribute to Roger Treemstra, of the longtime uh, meteorologist on WGN-TV Channel 9. Uh, first, I'll talk about a couple of things about me, uh, what's going on. Um, health-wise, I'm doing fine. Uh, I had two scans done, a CT scan uh, that's around the pelvic area and also a bone scan. Uh, the bone scan, they found something. They found a spot uh, by my 10th right rib. We don't know what it is. Uh, the doctor called me a couple of days ago and he says, uh, what we will do is we'll, you will take another blood test and then you'll come into the office. That's a week. Uh, that will be a week later. That will be around December, early December, that is. And we'll take it from there. And uh, he's not. He doesn't want to say anything to me because he doesn't know, you know, if it's serious or not, or it isn't. It, it'll depend on the PSA. He he says if it goes up, mm, it's suspicious, you know, there's something. But if it going, but if it goes down from the last previous test, I'm okay. As for the pelvic uh, area, nothing. He found nothing. Everything was fine. He said it was excellent. So uh, I think I'll be fine. Okay. Second of all, uh, a lot of people noticed uh, and they asked me, uh, why aren't you posting on your Facebook page? And uh, I explained that I'm temporarily blocked because of an ad I posted on one of my pages 
and this was March of 2019, and some, something or somehow reported it. So I have limited access to those pages. I mean, I can comment. Uh, I can post as a visitor, which I've been doing that, so that helps a little. But uh, as uh, as Vanish Chicago, I can't post. I can't edit. You know, I can't change them. That's not just for Vanish Chicago, and that's for the rest of the pages. So I'm stuck. I tried appealing. I tried contacting him. Nothing. That's how Facebook is. So I'm it's uh, so I'm temporarily locked out. Uh, according to the email I got, I've got about 19 days left. So around Thanksgiving, everything will be back to normal. It's going to be a long time, but I can still post on my Facebook groups and my profile. So that's fine. So you can find me there. And uh, it's it's uh, how would I say it's a hindrance, uh, annoying that is. So I don't want to say anything further. <laughs> it's, so I can still post on Twitter or Instagrams, which is okay, and do my podcasts. So it's just temporary, and uh, we'll just I'll just have to wait it out. There's nothing I could do uh, unless some miracle comes by and have me have the block lifted. I don't think so, but I'd be very, like I said, I'd be very surprised if it happens even before that. So it'll be around November 23rd, 24th. I'll be back, back to normal. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first off, I'm going to talk about uh, Wimpy's hamburgers, and uh, I didn't find much information about the uh, about this place, uh, but I did find one website um, that's a little uh, has more uh, information about the company, you know, and the fast food chain. So I'll get started. Uh, it was first known as Wimpy. Wimpy Grills, and that was founded in Bloomington, Indiana, by a man named Edward Gold. And uh, he started in 1934. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, and by that time, it had about uh, about 25 locations in the late 40s. And uh, then in the 50s, uh, he signed he signed a license with some company to operate Wimpy Bar in the United Kingdom. And then they opened uh, the open Wimpy's there. You know, and they were there for a long, long time. And uh, I never ate there. I never. You know, I was too young. And uh, by the time I was getting older, they were gone from the United States. So they were, they, they just disappeared. They closed down. Uh, what I heard that Edward Gold had a heart attack uh, in the 70s, and then uh, nobody wanted to take him over. Um, I don't know if he had family or not. And then they just closed down the closed down the, the restaurants in the United States. So that's a shame about that. And uh, so it, it was uh, their slogan was uh, from a character from the Popeye cartoons. Uh, it was uh, J. Wellington Wimpy, who was known as Wimpy. And uh, it, he would always say in the cartoons, I would gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I always remember that. I used to watch Popeye cartoons in, on Channel 32. Uh, not, not the black and white ones. They were These are the ones from the 60s. And, uh, and then they moved to Channel 44. But then I remember in the 70s, they brought the black and white ones. That's, they were uh, probably in the 30s and 40s. I remember that, and I uh, used to watch them every day on Channel 32. Then they moved to Channel 44. Then um, he copyright, and then Edward Gold copyrighted the song and joined the Whippy Lucky Club, and you know to promote business. And uh, also there, there there was a slogan called Wimpy, the glorified hamburger. A lot of people remember that. I saw the, the, a lot of comments from on Facebook because a lot of people remembered the store and they remembered the, you know, and not the store, the restaurant, excuse me. And, uh, and uh, let's see, the first store, uh, the first restaurant, I keep saying store, it's not store, it's restaurant. And uh, it op the first restaurant opened in 1936 and then it opened in other cities in the Midwest. And, uh, 
the one famous one was it opened on the on the northeast northeast corner of Randolph Street and Wabash Avenue in 1940. And it just took off. It was very popular. And uh they were and uh they were steam and it had five whole round patties with a special sauce. I don't know if it's a special sauce in McDonald's, you know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Like that. So it was kind of funny. And uh, let's see. And uh, as I said, you know, Edward Gold died and uh, he died around 1977. And uh, let's see. And, uh, you know, they close. And uh, I found some of the locations of uh, Wimpy's and, you know, there were a few in downtown, also on the north side and the west side. And uh, there were about three of them in the downtown area. And uh, they, it was one on 159 North uh, Wabash, which is the one I just mentioned. There was one on 20 West Monroe that was next to the Schubert Theater. And also on 17 East Washington Street. So there were about three. And uh, it grew up and then it expanded to the suburbs and other parts of the city like that. Uh, I don't know, because this is before McDonald's, so uh, I don't know. There were other uh, hamburger places at the time. There was Henry's Hamburgers. There was Yak and Doodle Dandy. Remember that, you know? And uh, Henry's, I never went there. The Yankee Doodle Dandy, I did. I went there when I was a kid like that. So, uh, you know, at the time, it, 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 during its peak, it was very popular, and they loved it. You know, people lined up to, just to get that. Okay, so here is the locations uh, that I mentioned. Uh, it was in the loop, but uh, let's see. I'm going to read them off in the loop location. So there was one on North Clark Street on Madison Street, uh, 17 East Washington Street, which I mentioned. They were as at State Street. Also 20 West Monroe Street, also at State Street. And 50 East Randolph at Wabash, which I mentioned before. Also 140 North Dearborn at Randolph Street. And also 159 North Wabash. So it was like every corner you go around in the loop, it was there. Just like McDonald's, <laughs> in a way, sort of. You know, that's amazing like that uh, during that time. So uh, other locations in Chicago was at 1055, 1055 West Lawrence Avenue. That's on the north side. That's uptown, I believe. Uh, also at the Hyde Park neighborhood. Uh, that was 1461 East Hyde Park Boulevard. Also, 2004 North Harlem Avenue. That's like Armitage. Uh, I think that's like uh, Borders Elmwood Park. Also, 3309 North Ashland. Uh, that's about Belmont. Also, 4861 North Milwaukee. That's about hmm, Lawrence in Milwaukee. Also, on the west side, uh, in the Austin neighborhood, that was at 5146 West Madison. So, that's about hmm, Laramie. Around there. Also, 5322 West Lawrence. So that's about, yeah, at Laramie 2 Avenue. Also, there was another one in the High Pike area that was at 55th and South Lake Park. Also, there was one 6206 West Cermak Road. And I think that's Cicero at Borders Berwyn. And there was one at 6350 North Lincoln Avenue that's near uh, Devon, but it, it was a drive in, you know. With car hop service, you know, when girls come out and they serve you hamburgers, they wear those cute outfits. <laughs> also, uh, on the south side, there was uh, one at 71st and Kedzie. Uh, I don't remember that. And it also says there was one at Fort City Mall. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't remember seeing it <laughs> when I lived there. It must have been in the 60s. Yeah, so it was at 76 in Cicero and also at 79th and Halstead in the Inglewood neighborhood. Okay. And uh, others were at uh, in the suburbs. One was at Schomburg. And uh, it opened when, when the Woodf at Woodfield Mall, which opened in 1971. And uh, then in 6200 West Roosevelt Road in Oak Park. Also, uh, two in Evergreen Park. One was at 98th Street and Western, right near the uh, Evergreen Plaza. 
And it was one across the street at 95th and Western. So uh, a lot of people remembered that one, uh, according to the Facebook comments. I remember the, at 95th and Western. That must have been in the, uh, the 50s or 60s around that time. And also there was one in Lake Cruz Mall, Waukegan. So I like that. And uh, so they... Uh, you know, it went for business, then they closed in the United States, and then they moved, and then it was very prominent in the United Kingdom, especially in London. So um, I saw some commercials on YouTube, and they showed, you know, they showed the hamburgers and the fries. They don't call them fries, they call them chips. <laughs> like that. And they were there, it was in business for a long, long time. Uh, I don't know if it's still there. Some people claim that they closed them all down recently. Maybe there's a couple lingering all over the place. And uh, and then I heard now it's uh, headquartered in South Africa. Oh, okay, and they have them there. You know, so if you travel to England, who knows? It might be closed. I'm not sure. And. Uh, or you go to travel to South Africa and you go to Wimpy's and have a hamburger. Well, we don't know. <laughs> According to commercials, they look pretty good. So I uh, I can't say if they were wonderful because I never went there. Like that. So, and uh, people still say that slogan, you know, the glorified hamburger. And uh, they remember, a lot of people... On Facebook, mentioned their memories, like they, like their parents took them there, their grandparents, you know, after they go shopping in a loop, or they after they see a show at the Super Theater, they after that stop by and get something to eat. You know, they have hamburgers, uh, milkshake, fries. You know, that's kind of fun, like that. Okay, so that's all for all for Wimpy's. So right now, I will uh, talk about. Uh, the Spiegel Catalog Company. But first, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back, everyone. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the segment for uh, Wimpy's Hamburgers. Right now, I'm going to talk about the Spiegel Company. Uh, we'll talk about my memories of this place and uh, whatever information I gathered about it. So here we go. So uh, the Spiegel, it was a uh, retailer. It was found by a man named Joseph Spiegel. And uh, it published a catalog, uh, and it was competing with uh, Sears and Montgomery Ward. And uh, it advertised uh, brands of apparel, accessories, footwear, uh, houseware, you know, like appliances, toys, tools, uh, electronics, you name it, they did that. And uh, that's very... Uh, they also had the, uh, so when you had a catalog, you, uh, you know, they came in with an envelope and probably a list of uh, things you want to order like that. And it's been a while since I used a catalog <laughs> and like that. And uh, the first mail order catalog was from 1905, you know, and uh, that was before Sears and Montgomery Ward did that. And uh, it uh, it became very popular, and a lot of consumers uh, enjoyed uh, ordering like that. And also, uh, one was one was very popular. That is, is fashion. It was like dresses, and uh, the women were looking at the latest trends from Europe. And uh, Spiegel provided provided that, so that's uh, that's kind of cool, like that. And uh, let's see. My memories of that, of the Spiegel Company, I used to see their catalogs you know, when I was little. They were very colorful, you know, with the Spiegel brand and all that. Also on uh, television. And I used to watch a lot of game shows. I still do when I was very little. Uh, you know, they showed them on Channel 5, Channel 2, Channel 7. And uh, I think the three that stood out the most was were excuse me were uh, was Hollywood Squares and uh, Sale of the Century. Maybe the Price is Right. I I don't know. I don't remember. Probably uh, probably in those in the early days. And also, let's make a deal. 
I remember that when I watched that make a deal. They, you know, the announcer would say the Spiegel Company. You know, they have that logo like that. And uh, of course, on Let's Make a Deal, you know, I'm, you, that show's still on the air. You have Wayne Brady hosting, but, it, but when I watched it when I was little, it was Monty Hall. And uh, at first, the show wasn't, uh, people did not dress up in costumes. They were uh, very, uh, they dressed normally. You know, people, men wore suits, women wore dresses. Very nice. And then one day, somebody dressed up in a crazy costume, and then it just caught, caught, uh, Monty Hall's attention or the producer, and they said, Why don't we do that? So, um, they did what let's make a deal. So that worked and it became very successful. My favorite thing in the show was when you pick curtain, uh, either curtain number one, number two, and number three. And if if you choose the wrong curtain, you get like, uh, I don't know, a donkey or kind of not a very nice prize, or you know, or and uh, Johnny Olson would be, uh, you know, he was the announcer. You know, he dressed up like a farm. <laughs> so, you know, so anyway, get, getting back to Spiegel. So uh, they opened a a store on the Chicago South Side, and it was also a, the office building. And that was built in the late '30s, and that was that was located at. Uh, 1038 West 35th Street. So that's about like Morgan, 35th, uh, in the Bridgeport na- uh, neighborhood. And it was a huge, it's a huge place. And uh, it was an office building. And I'm sure they had all the merchandise stored there, I believe. I, I don't know. I'm not so sure. But it was, uh, and also they had a store there too. So if you went, if you were in the area and you parked, you could go um, go there and purchase items. You can browse if you like, or even place an order for next time. You do that sort of thing. The building's still there, uh, and uh, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places. So that's good. It's still there. Uh, I don't know what they use it now. I have no idea. Uh, someone tells me it's for the Chicago Board of Education. Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure, but uh, I I drove there one time. I was in the area about in the 80s, and I drove by, and I saw the Spiegel sign. It was like the walkway across 35th Street, and it was kind of cool seeing that. And uh, some people they have fond memories of going there. They they love the they love the store. They really did. They love the merchandise and all that. And let's see. Uh, so I found some locations of the Spiegel uh, stores. They they had brick and mortar stores. So I found an ad from the Chicago Tribune from April 8th, 1948. And uh, if, I, if I read the locations, it will uh, trigger your memory. So uh, here we go. And there were uh, quite a few in the... In the the Chicago Loop, you know, they were on State Street. Also on the north side, it was uh, on 4740 North Sheridan. There was 13226 on North Lincoln Avenue. Also uh, two on Milwaukee, um, Lincoln Avenue, that is. Yeah, 3226 Lincoln Avenue. Also two in, on Milwaukee Avenue, 2754, 4017. Also there was one on 3323 West Lawrence. That's around Kedzie. Also at Devon and Western in the Rogers Park na- uh, West Ridge neighborhood, excuse me. Also, there were uh, one on the west side at Madison and Pulaski. That's where that huge uh, Goldblatt's building. A lot of people remember that. Also, there was at uh, Belmont and Central. There was a big Sears store, or no Goldblatt's. Excuse me, it was a Goldblatt store. Yeah. It was also in the Brighton Park uh, neighborhood at 4265 West Archer. Also, the one I mentioned at the 35th Street, the big, huge building. Also, there was one, uh, 63rd and Halstead, which was in the Inglewood neighborhood. Also, 925, 925 East 63rd Street. That's in the Woodlawn area, you know, above the L. Uh, that's like about, eh, it was South Park called, but it was Martin, now it's King Drive. Over there. Also, there was one in Berwyn at 6325 West Cermak. Also, there was one in the South Chicago neighborhood 
at 91st and Commercial. I never knew that. Also at my old neighborhood in Rosen at 111 and 1105 South Michigan. I don't remember seeing that. I don't remember seeing it when I was little. I don't know. Maybe it closed before I moved there. That's amazing. And there was one in Oak Park on 1143 Lake Street. And uh, also in Indiana and Joliet. And and also they had like uh, specialty stores like that. So there's a lot of locations. I won't go into that. And uh, also they had outlet stores. You know, Spiegel opened there as well. And uh, I have an ad for that. And uh, I will read the, read the locations for the Spiegel outlet stores. And you might, uh, you might remember these locations. You know, it's kind of interesting. Okay. And so, uh, of course, there's the one in 35th and Morgan. We know that. There was one in Countryside at 9950 South, uh, no, 9950 Joliet Road. Also in Deerfield, 220 South Waukegan Road. Uh, there was one at Downers Grove at 1432 Butterfield Road. Um, when I when I finished the locations, I, I got a memory of that place. I'll be there in a minute. Also, it was Gurney Mills. You know, it's in Gurney. Also, Morton Grove at 6811 Dempster. Also, there was one in Naperville. At 2781 Aurora Avenue. Also in Orland Park. This was at Orland Park Place. And I remember this. And I, I believe I went there one time with my mom. Yeah, she went to see something. So it was nice. It was a nice store. Also at Palatine, 1331 West Rand Road. And the last one was in Villa Park, 200 East North Avenue. Now, the one at Downers Grove, um, during the 80s, I was looking for work, and uh, they were looking for customer service, and that's uh, an area that makes me nervous. I don't like talking on the phones, you know, because I worked in a travel business. And uh, they had some openings at their office. This was not in Butterfield Road. This was in Oak Brook. It's those uh, two brown buildings. If you're in the Oak Brook area and it's across the street from Oak Brook Center, you would know if you live in the area or have visited. That's at 20, West 22nd Street and Route 83. So you know what? I, I applied through an employment agency. They asked me if they're looking for uh, people, you know, customer service. I said, eh, why not? I'll try it. So I, I went there and I applied and they liked me and they said, would you like to start work? And I said, okay. Then um, I went through training over there and uh, I was a mess. <laughs> it's just... I was too nervous. I couldn't remember. You know, you have to read through a script you know, if you're a salesman, which I dislike. And uh, that didn't work out well, you know, for me. Uh, this has happened uh, various times in my life, you know, when I did customer service and you have to talk like a robot. So I'm glad, you know, uh, they weren't pleased, but uh, but they were understanding. So I told them this wasn't for me. So and they said, okay. You know, you you can leave. You know, you don't have to continue, which was so uh, because uh, I did uh, something similar when I worked at Sears. It was at, uh, oh, I forgot where it was. Yeah, it was in Oak Brook. It was the uh, credit card division. And I worked for customer service. And, you know, I would call people random, you know, would they like to apply for a Sears credit card? And, uh, you know, I went through training and I did that, but, you know, there were days I didn't show up and I didn't want to do it anymore. And I just, uh, quit. I, I didn't like it. I didn't care. Uh, I remember the, the young man that got me the job, he called me one day and he yelled at me. <laughs> I thought, I'm sorry. I just couldn't, no, I couldn't do it. So I was not a very, uh, he was not a happy camper. And I don't think he want to use my, use me again to look for another job. I, I think he got yelled at <laughs> uh, by someone. So that's my Spiegel memory and my Sears uh, credit card memories <laughs> like that. Okay. And, uh, you know, Spiegel uh, was in business for quite a while. Then, um, you know, and then there was competition, and then a lot of you know a lot of people stayed away, and times have changed, and then online shopping came, 
And uh, then they went out of business. And uh, they had a website for a while, but then it's been taken down. So, uh, which is a shame. So, a lot of people still remember Sears. I'm not Sears. Spiegel's. The Spiegel company that, uh, you know, they remember the commercials. They remember the beautiful clothes, the merchandise, uh, visiting to the store on West 50. on West 35th Street in Chicago in the Bridgeport neighborhood or any outlet stores that I mentioned. They, they enjoyed that. They really did. And uh, yeah, that's a shame. But you can find catalogs on eBay if you're interested. Uh, you know, it's nice to look back and look how the fashions were back then and the toys and the other merchandise, which is kind of cool. Okay. Next up, I'm going to talk about Roger Treemstra. Uh, he's the he was the meteorologist for WGN TV Channel Nine in Chicago, also on WGN Radio. Uh, when when his death was announced yesterday, I was very sad because I used to watch him when I was little, and uh, he seemed like a very nice man. He was I heard he had a great sense of humor, and he was on TV for a long, long time, and. Uh, so right now I'm going to play a, it's a clip. It's a sound clip of him. Uh, it's a Chicago news break. So it's from the WGN news and it's Roger Teresa doing the news. I'm uh, not the news, the weather. <laughs> That's silly. So here's the news break from July 17th, 1986 with Roger Teresa doing the weather. Here, so sit back and enjoy your one. Thank you. Well, it was another warm one today. We've got up to 94 degrees, the warmest so far this year. Looking at the radar, boy, I see no relief in sight for us at all. The good news, they're starting to get a little bit rain in the southeastern part of the country. They still need a lot more. These showers and thunderstorms to the west are pretty widely scattered. We might see some of that activity coming into our area sometime late on Sunday where it could cool off a little bit. We'll have the complete weather story at 9 o'clock. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that clip of Roger Trimsta doing the weather. Oh, he sounded beautiful. Uh, that's the, how I just remembered him. Um, let me talk a little bit about him. Uh, let's see. Uh, he was from South Holland, uh, you know, graduate of Thornton Township High School. Uh, he earned an engineer degree from the Illinois Institute of Technology. Served at the Air Force, and then he became a weather office for the Strategic Weather Command. And then uh, he worked at other places, and then he got hired as a part-time weatherman for WLS-TV. So that must have been about in the late 60s, like that. And uh, and then he joined WGN-TV Channel 9, also WGN Radio, in 1967. He was a backup weatherman. Uh, for for how Harry Volkman, yeah. So and uh, he worked he worked there in the seventies and eighties, and then he retired in nineteen ninety eight. And then uh, so so I watched him for many uh, many years. Uh, I don't remember him watching him in at night. Uh, maybe during the day I saw him when I was when I wasn't at school. Or on the weekends, so probably the weekends I probably saw him. And uh, also, he wrote a book. He really did. He wrote a book, and uh, let's see, the book. Uh, it was called "Cooler by the Lake," and uh, I think he worked on this book for a long time. I, I'm sure he had help, and he talked about his life and uh, about the weather. And uh, they had a book signing. Uh, uh, a few years ago and people came to visit him and uh, it was the, uh, let's see, the outcome was very, uh, it was wonderful. You know, people wanted to talk to Roger and like that. Also, in, and also was with them were uh, Tom Skilling and also Eddie Volkman, son of Harry Volkman. And they joined him and that was, oh, that was kind of cool seeing that. And, uh, oh, because, uh, Tom Skilling got hired in 79, I think, I believe, yeah, and 79 or 80, around there, and, and 
Roger Trees that worked before him. It's like that. But uh, they still work together. And uh, also when Tom was off or, Reg- Ro- or Roger was off, you know, they filled in, you know, when they were uh, doing the weather like that. But he was mostly on the radio. And I did listen to him from time to time on WGN Radio. You can recognize his voice, which is fine. And he worked with a lot of legends on the radio, like, for, uh, for example, Wally Phillips, Roy Leonard, Bob Collins, and also uh, Orion Samuelson and Max Armstrong. He worked with them and, and, and maybe others like that. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, it really is. And uh, so uh, luckily I found an old TV uh, ad in the newspaper and I posted it yesterday on my social media accounts. And that that was kind of cool. And people remembered him and they missed him and they felt sad about him when he passed away. Another Chicago legend. That's kind of sad. Yeah, so I, I might buy his book. Yeah, uh, because I'm very curious, uh, you know, what he wrote. And he probably has pictures, I would imagine, and uh, talk about how he started. And so I love that kind of history, especially television history. And uh, Roger was on TV uh, probably I don't know, a year ago. Yeah, probably a year ago. And he was talking to Paul Conrad, who does the weather on WGN Morning News. And it was hilarious. I think you could find that uh, the clips uh, probably on the internet or YouTube. And it was and he uh, Roger was sharp, uh, lucid, you know, and spot on. And he, he had a great and had a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> I enjoyed it very much. That was that was kind of cool. It was nice. And unfortunately, he passed away yesterday at the age of ninety-two. He lived a long life, you know. So. So we'll miss them. Okay. So that'll be all for today. Uh, I'll do a uh, recap of what I what I talked about on the program. I talked about Wimpy's Hamburgers, the Spiegel uh, Catalog Company, and a uh, tribute to Roger Tremsta of WGN TV Channel Nine in Chicago. Uh, I will do probably do another podcast on Tuesday. We'll see. And uh, I'm going to do my TV Oblivion podcast. I haven't done one in about two weeks, so I'm going to do one tomorrow. So I'll get, work, get cracking on that. It's ready, but I have to get up uh, information like that. And uh, the, the, once this podcast is published, it'll be available wherever podcasts are available. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, it'll be posted on my social media accounts, Facebook and Twitter. And it'll also be on my YouTube channel. And if you go to YouTube and do a search, Fan of Chicago and Stories, it'll be there. So it'll all be available this afternoon. So just be patient. Yeah, it takes time <laughs> to do that. <laughs> so uh, thank you again for joining me. This is Pico Sanchez, your host of Fan of Chicago and Stories. Uh, I had a wonderful time. Covered a lot of air, covered a lot of ground today. I enjoy doing it. I love it. So I hope to hear from you soon, uh, next time, on the next episode. And also, it's bye bye from me. And here's Ray Rayner saying bye bye now. With a little traveling music. So take it away, Ray. So long, everyone. Take care. Bye. We have to go. Bye bye bye. <laughs>